Howdy folks, this is Jared the Fluted Lick Homestead, and today we're going to be doing a video on putting a hickory bark seat in a cane bottom chair. Um, I've got another video on doing that, and I've got a video on harvesting the bark and using store-bought rush cane. Um, I'll post a link if you want to check those out. I'll post a card up here. And today, uh, I thought I would do another video because I get lots of comments and emails about the hickory bark and putting the seats in and stuff so i had this little uh kids chair hanging in my barn and i thought today um, it's kind of rainy ain't too cold but i thought it'd be a good day to work on this so i've got just enough bark i believe to do this project so today we're going to be putting a seat in this little chair and you can see this is a really small child-sized chair and it's a uh, handmade I don't know how old it is, but I would say early 1900s, maybe older 1800s. But it's made in the same style as the big ones. And uh, it has this feature on these rails. It's found in a lot of these old homemade chairs that I've worked on. And they leave all these uh, lengthened right here. And I believe, you know, that's to give your cane some more support. Instead of just being round like these bottom ones would be. That would give you some more structure there to your chair. And this is a neat looking little chair. They've tried to put some nice details on it. And uh, I'd say it's been a real pretty little chair in its day. And it's been set in a lot. You can tell it's a uh, war on where some little kids, you know, put their feet on it a whole lot. And uh, I like the color of it. I think it'll look really good with a new hickory bottom. And uh, it would look good sitting beside a fireplace or in your house. So I'm gonna get my bark and stuff ready and we'll get a seat put in this. All right, uh, I got my little bundle of cane here, and uh, this is all I have left. Um, I'm gonna take me a few little spools of it, and we're gonna soak this in water. I've got a, a little bucket here with water in it beside of me. Uh, warm water would do faster, but I've just got uh, average temperature water, whatever it is outside. So I'm gonna soak me, uh, I'm gonna put about, I don't know, this and, We'll do maybe three at a time, see how far it goes. And these pieces are probably, this is a single piece of bark. This is probably about 30 feet long, if I remember right. So we're just gonna soak it in the water for a while and that'll make it pliable. Right now, you can see it's very, very stiff. And how, see that breaks if you bend it too hard. So we're going to soak this and it'll make it really pliable to use. That's all I'm going to soak for now. Once we get going, when I see how much more I need, I'll add more to it. Should be uh, plenty enough to do this little chair. Okay, I had to add me a little bit of warm water uh, to my bucket. It's just, uh, it was too cool and taking too long. So I took a tea kettle, heated up a little bit of water and now my cane is just about ready. So uh, that gave me a good chance for a good coffee break. Take a coffee break every chance you get. It's good for you. Okay, whenever we do this little chair, um, like all of them, I always start in the back. And I start in the back left corner. And I work left to right. And uh, the main thing, probably about the only tool you need to do a chair, is a good, shop, uh, good sharp knife. I've got this little old, uh, this is a really old case, double X. This is a, if all you knife guys will be asking me, this is a straight case. It's one of my favorite ones for doing this. It's really sharp. I've got a nice little, two nice little blades. Um, I normally use this little bigger blade. It's the sharpest, but any knife will do. A razor knife does really good. I've used them a lot. Uh, but a good sharp, a good sharp pocket knife will do all you need to do. Our cane is about ready. And we're going to get started. 
like I said, we're going to start in this back corner and work left to right. And uh, your chairs are always narrower in the back and wider in the front. And uh, you want to start in the back, and we're going to come straight across the front. And don't worry about this little gap right here. Um, it'll look good. So we're going to come straight across. Okay. I've got the uh, cane out. And you see it's uh, pretty flexible now. You can bend it. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to shave down one end of it to make it thinner. You see how thick it is? Then my starting end, we're going to thin it down some. So I'm going to take my good sharp knife. I'm going to shave that about three or four inches of it down to about, let's see, I'm going to cut this off right here. There's a little crack I don't like. Now we'll shave her down. Okay, I got to shave down a little bit here. Now we're going to start our weave, and I'm going to try to readjust my camera, and we'll get started weaving this chair. Okay, there we have it. I just wrapped that around and um, just tucked it under itself. I don't know if you can see it really good, but now we're just going to come straight across from it here. And then we're going to go underneath. And back around the back. Back right up over the front. Now we're going to try to get this tightened up a little bit. All right, I had to do a little bending on this. This piece of cane I got left a little thick when I harvested it. And it's a little hard to work with when you get it too thick. Now that was perfect thickness there. Get some of this. I must have missed this piece whenever I, uh, some of it, if I get it too thick, I'll shave it down a little bit.
Okay, so now we have came to the end of this piece and it hit at, uh, right at the edge going under. So I don't like that for splicing. So we're gonna back up where it hits underneath the chair. Then we're gonna cut this off to make our splice. Okay, now to make our splice, we're gonna shave this down a little bit on the end into kind of an arrow shape. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna put us a notch on each side. Yeah, I left this a little thick, a little harder to work with than usual. Then we're gonna step back and pull up to our notch. And you see here, it looks like a arrowhead. So now I'm gonna get my next piece out. I'm gonna cut this one end right here off because it's got a bad spot. Now we're going to go up about an inch and a half inch. And we're gonna be careful not to cut our finger off. We're gonna push our knife blade through the middle of the cane. That's where this little, uh, kind of a, thin bladed knife. That little blade's only about a quarter inch wide. I can stick it right in there. Then we're gonna stick it in this way and cut us a, a notch right out of here. And we'll cut that little tongue off. And make that just a hair wider, not much. This is where the real difference comes in in a splicing in store-bought cane and hickory bark because it's a lot harder to get a, a rush reed to uh, hold a splice like this. All right, you see there we've got our hole in it. Now, I'm gonna bring this new cane right up here to the back. And right here's where the magic is. You're just gonna put this in and turn it. And right there you have a splice. You see there's sideways view. That's strong splice. And from the bottom, all you'll see is this right here. I'll do an up close view of that once we get our chair finished. So now we just take off weaving again. And this piece will be plenty enough to finish the bottom run and start around the sides. Whoop. I got it stuck in between the, the last run. Okay, let me get her situated here again. Get this tightened up. Get our new piece tightened up here.
Okay, here we go again. Okay, um, we might get one more wrap right here. Yep, okay. Now here's where the fun part starts. This is our going to be our transition, and uh, you got to kind of make sure these all stay lined up how you want them. Sometimes you got to push them back over a little bit, but you can adjust them for a while until you start getting a lot of pressure on them with your weave. I just try to space these out where there's about the equal size on both sides of the chair. Now we're ready to start our uh, our weave. And what we're gonna do, I like to, I like it when it hits in the back here because this is your tightest spot to weave because it's closer together. So I've came across the top. Now I'm gonna put my cane down through the hole here. And we're gonna bend it right around this back leg. Now we're gonna come back up the top, just like that. And now this is one, two pieces is all we've got so far. So now you've got to come over here and find the end. And it'll all start coming together now. Now we get our end. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do a splint weave, a herringbone pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over one. And I think this time we're going to go under two. You can do under three on a big chair, but I kind of like the over two on these small ones. So we're going to, we're just skipping the first one. Then we're going to go under two, over two. Look, watch your fingers. Under two and over two. Then we're going to pull all our slack out. Make sure you don't get it twisted. Now, get this tightened back up here. Okay. Give him a good pull. Make sure you push him back, lined up good. And right there is our first weave. So now we're gonna flip our chair over and uh, always make your bottom look as pretty as your top. We're gonna do the same pattern on the bottom. You don't have to, but I like to. Over two, under two. I've seen uh, some chairs that they just do a uh, over and under on a single uh, piece, but I always do the same pattern, top and bottom. And uh, any splices you have, I always do them on the bottom. And then I just kind of give him a good uh, pull. Keep him good and tight. Now we're going to flip him back. Now this time, you see we started, we went over one the last time. Now we're going to go over two. So we're going to go over two, under two. 
over two, under two. Um, you can weave a chair with about any material you want to. I've woven with seagrass string. I've woven with uh, store-bought reed, of course, hickory bark. I've done inner tube, which I've got one I'm getting ready to do with inner tube soon. And I'll video. All right, looking good. Just make sure you got them where you want them, because once this is done, you ain't moving them. All right, you can kind of see our pattern taking shape. Now, same on the bottom. We went over two on the first time. So now we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna skip under one. Then we're gonna go over two. Under two. Over two and under two. Oop, I got that piece flipped upside down on me. So sometimes you can give him a twist and straighten him back out. And you can see here, we're gonna end up covering up our splice. Right here's our splice. And I'd say it'll be covered, uh, it might show on the next piece, but that's pretty good to only have one splice. These little chairs is easier to get by with a few splices. And really the longer your cane, the better. If I could weave a whole chair with one piece, it would uh, it'd definitely be good. Might be hard to weave in and out though. Okay, now we've went to over one and then over two. Now we're going back to over one. No, nope, we're going, excuse me, we're going under this one. We're going under one, over two. You want to gain every time. That keeps your pattern right. So we went over one, over two. Now we're starting under. Now we're going to go over two, under two. Once this starts getting tight on you, um, it'll make your fingers kind of raw. And if you need to, you can take a, a butter knife or anything and kind of stick down between these layers and slide your cane up on if you need help getting it in and out of the weave. They do get pretty tight. Now, this piece, I see I don't have enough to go back around another time. So we're gonna cut this off a little bit. Now we're gonna finish our weave up here. Under two, over two. Okay, and now I've just left this piece hanging here. That'll be good and tight. We're gonna take our next piece. And I'm gonna shake a little of the water off. I'm gonna cut this off. Here's a little bad spot from where a knot or something has been. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this right over this piece. And then we're just gonna tuck it in under. 
and by the time this dries, there'll be so much tension and it'll be brittle and uh, it'll be very strong. You won't have to worry about it. You can uh, splice them if you want to, but I don't, and most of the chair, old chairs that I've worked on, uh, they didn't splice this neither. All right. Let me find the end. There we go. Okay, right here's our finished chair. 
and it took two pieces of cane. And I might could have squeezed in one more if I tightened it up a little bit and got one more lap around here, but it's, uh, my cane's a little thick, so it's really hard to weave a tight spot like that. So um, I think it looked really good and it'll last as long as I, probably as long as I last. You can see a hickory bark whenever you wet it and get it worked in there. It looks really, really nice, the color. Here's the bottom of it. Um, you can, if you really look, you can see the, spl uh, the splint, but it's hard to see. It blends in really good. All in all, really nice little chair. Good and solid. And uh, this bottom will last ages and ages. So it's a little work to get the hickory bark and to weave it and stuff, but it, it lasts a lot longer than the store-bought rush seat. Okay, right here is the old and the new. Both of them are really old chairs, of course. But this one has got the new hickory bark. And this one probably has the original from... Lord, it could be... It's hard to say how old it is. And I sit in this chair still often, and it still holds up. Although, uh, this side is getting pretty frayed and wore out. I need to do a little work on it. But I like these old bottoms. I hate to take them out until they just absolutely have to. Uh, but it's, this chair is made the same way as this other one. Um, same style on the runners. And it's kind of got the same kind of details on top. Um, they came from two different parts of eastern Kentucky. But this one has been well, well used. It's almost worn in two on both sides from somebody's feet. Um, it has really, really been set in a lot. We'll flip it over and uh, look at the bottom. It's been leaned in a lot too. It's wore at an angle. Um, this chair has a different style. They didn't um, do the same thing that I do when I connect a piece. They tie theirs. They do a weaver's knot. And uh, I've done these, but I like the uh, other way better myself. But I mean, it's held up this long. But this is another way you can do it is they, uh, they tie a knot in it. And I do this if I was using inner tube or rope or some other type but i just kind of set in my way on how i do it but that is an old old knot holding this one together here's our finished little chair um i moved it over here in the light where you could see the colors of it a little better like i said i might could have squeezed in one more run if i tightened it up a little bit but it's really hard to weave when you get uh that many weaves in Here's a better view of the bottom. And you can barely see our splice right here. Right here's our splice. It's got one piece kind of covering it up. So you will never hardly notice that. And most people don't flip a chair over anyway. So hope this video helps somebody and I appreciate everybody watching. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, um, homesteading, Appalachian life, some carpentry stuff, and make sure you subscribe and like the channel. We appreciate everybody who comments and uh, subscribes so far. Check us out on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all that social stuff. Uh, we appreciate you. Hope you have a very blessed day.